Hey guys, welcome to Minecraft on the Block, and welcome to Terra Firma Craft Beta 2 Pre-39. Um, I have just created a fresh world, and it's actually a really cool seed. The seed is right there. Take a look. We are starting in a Plains 1 with some really cool mountains over there, and that is probably right there is where I'm going to go check out and see about building the house. Um, structures are off. Generate structures are off in World Gen um, because it doesn't really fit with the, with the whole format of the game. Um, I actually uh, have been watching Chrysin um, 1. I think it's C-R-Y-S-Y-N 1. He does a, a, a series called Spotter's Guide. And I've learned a, a lot of stuff from him. He's definitely, his early stuff was very tutorial-like, and then he's gone into a more of a let's play. And I'm going to do a very short version of that. I'll talk a little bit more about that as we get going. But um, let's get right into it. There's a couple of things we need to do to, um, to survive. And surviving the first night is, is once again actually a task, <laughs> something that's not that easy to accomplish. Um, so... We'll jump in. We're looking for two things right away. One, we know we're going to need some sticks, and we're going to want to get some of these trees down. Um, we don't get sticks from chopping down a tree and taking the planks and turning them into sticks. We get sticks from pounding on the branches, and, and they drop sticks. We can then use flint and sticks to make a flint tool, which is the very basic first form of a tool in this game. Um, and doing that will allow us to chop down a tree, although very inefficiently. And there, right there, is our first piece of flint. So that's the first thing we need is a piece of flint. Um, we need as many of those as we can find um, early on here. And we also actually need some meat. So let me see if I can... Oh, there's a skeleton. We don't need a skeleton at all. So I'm going to stay away. Those guys can kill us pretty quickly <laughs> this early in the game. And we don't even have the ability to... Uh, to make a sword, so we're gonna be we're gonna be staying away from him. Um, let me go. I would also really like to get three pieces of wool, and it looks like I can. So we'll get that quickly as well, and we'll try to get the basics for surviving the first night done here quickly. Um, it's once you get if you can if you can find some flint and some sticks and some wool quickly. Um, the first night becomes less of a problem. If you don't find a lot of those things right away and you can't manage the time early on, it actually can be tough to even get through the first night. Like I said, you can't even make a stone sword. Um, we have to actually, we have to actually do things a lot more deliberately. So, um, I'm going to talk about that. We're looking for flint sticks, logs. We'll turn those into planks. We'll get a, um, Ooh, we also want some chickens, so I'm going to go ahead and take care of those. We're going to want the feathers and the meat, obviously. Um, the feathers will be used for quite a few things. One, if we can get lucky and get some string, we'll uh, make some arrows, but we also need it for a couple of the a couple of the things, we, or at least one of the things we have to build um, at some point. And, yeah, let me see. So I, I know I'm a little scattered because this early on you have to, I can't just, do too much talking until we get rolling. Once we once we get ourselves established, I'll do a little more talking. Um, this is actually a little bit rare to not find. Well, it's not that rare actually. I have had it uh, spawns where I don't find very many pieces of flint early on, and this is definitely one of them. Um, you saw that those little stones on the ground when I knocked them out, they yielded flint, and that's important. I'm gonna go ahead and start getting some wood we can at least get started. Um, that's important because it will also tell you what kind of stone is right beneath the surface. So um, you'll start to get used to, to telling different stones apart. There is not just smooth stone and gravel and whatnot in this game. We now have things like, well, I don't know. I don't know how many different types of stone there are, but there are a lot of different types of stone. Um, there's probably, I don't know, 50, I'm just guessing. Um, okay, so you can you can see that if I was to punch this tree right now, I would not actually get anything. I can break it all the way down. It's just going to stay, and then it would just reset. I need an, a flint tool, which I made with a stick and a piece of flint. This is the very basic tool, like I said, um, the most basic tool in the game. And when we break down a tree, we get logs. Now, that's white cedar. We'll go into what that means for our future. 
um, before too long, but I'm going to go ahead and get a little more white cedar because you can only stack them in, uh, in stacks of four logs. It's good to try to get the same kind of trees early on if possible so that you can kind of manage your inventory a little bit better. Um, as we talked about before, we need to break the branches to get the sticks, which is what I'm doing right now. And we're going to get as many of those as we can early on. Normally I would just chop down the tree if I had a lot of sticks, but we don't have a lot of sticks. So um, when you chop down the tree, the leaves just go away. All right, that's probably good on on tree right now, on, uh, on logs. We are going to need more, but we'll come back for that. Um, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and get this one as well. Um, you can see the, the color of the little particles when I'm cutting down the tree, or if you just punch them, see the red particles? That's the color of the wood inside, and you can see these are kind of white. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, well, let's just do this. Um, it shows you what kind of what kind of wood you can expect or what kind of planks you can expect to get out of the tree. So that's a useful tip, um, especially early on if you want to know, so if you're looking for certain colors of wood or even just kind of help you identify the tree. Um, we are going to need wood for our fires as well. So it's not just for making planks, it's for everything. It's for surviving in general. <laughs> if we don't have wood, we're not even going to be able to eat. So. You can see, if you guys aren't familiar with this, it's, it's, a, it's an entire remake. Well, remake's maybe too strong a word. It's a reimagining of a lot of the gameplay mechanics in Minecraft. Um, and they do a really good job of... It, it's meant to be harder. It's meant to be more difficult. Um, and they definitely do a good job of that. It's also meant um, to, to challenge the survival aspects, not just more difficult um, for the sake of difficulty, but um, for just realism and, and challenging the survival aspects. There's some flint down there. Um, for instance, um, the whole idea of, of how much you can carry and, and the different types of trees. I mean, there's a ton of different trees in the game and the trees have hardness. Uh, so different trees will be more useful for different things. Um, some of them burn hotter, some of them burn longer, some of them um, create different color woods and all that. So um, you can see here we have a, a totally different color stone and that's going to be something that we need to keep in mind. We're looking for very specific stone types early in the game. Um, and I said that we were going to settle here, but I probably maybe maybe jump the gun. It's something we definitely want to keep in mind is this place. But we, but we want to settle near um, a couple of things. One is going to be granite. Um, granite stone is the type of stone that we will be able to find cassiterite, which yields 10. Um, and the tin, so cassiterite is the ore, tin is the metal when you smelt it down. And that's a whole other thing we'll talk about. But um, getting tin, <clears throat> excuse me, is a, is a very, very important part of the game. Um, and I'm going to need to find a place to, to spend the night. So let's do this. We need a little bit of, a little bit of cow in our life as well because we are going to need some leather. We're going to need some meat. So I'm going to go ahead and take one cow down at least. Um, don't use your flint tools because they aren't, they'll, it'll, it'll use them up really quickly and they don't really do that much more damage than just beating a cow with your fist. So um, I wouldn't suggest using the flint tools. Come back here. So a couple other things to mention. There are seasons in this game now. Um, if you guys have watched my previous um, versions of this, whoa, oh, <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and eat a piece of raw beef, and then we'll get set because I'm dying of hunger. Let's go ahead and just find a spot to stay the night. Um, yeah, what was I so what was I saying about if you've watched the previous episodes? Yeah, you, you'll know that there's a lot of updates since then. Um, these trees, for instance, this is something we're going to get into a little bit more. Um, those are fruit trees, and right now they're not blooming because it's not the right season. If we hit the N key, we'll get the calendar. It is early spring. It is the 1st of March, 1,000. Temperature is 9 degrees Celsius, and it's the 16th hour of the day. So you can kind of get an, an idea about what's going on from that. Um, that will, as, as the year progresses, the seasons will change uh, so much that everything will start to bloom and produce fruit and whatever they do. Um, as well as uh, snow and temperature changes and things like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's very interesting. I think that is going to add a lot to the game, and that was not in place last time Last time we met. 
Um, so anyway, before I keep rambling too much, um, I have a lot more to say, but let me, uh, let me go find a place to stay the night. So let's, let's go just get near the stone so that we can at least have a chance of doing a little mining and getting down in the earth a little bit before the, uh, the next day and I can show you a little bit about some of the mechanics there so we got really most of the things that we need um, we got some food and we have the ability to break some of these stones so I'm just gonna make a really basic cave out of the out of the side of this mountain um, something to keep in mind as well dirt and cobblestone and this takes forever dirt and cobblestone um, have physics like sand so if I was to um, go ahead and take this dirt down you would notice that um, it would fall all the pieces above it would fall with the exception of a top piece that is well any piece that is covered with grass grass will hold up the dirt um, and that's an important thing to remember because you can actually use that but if you walk on grass that doesn't have anything below it then it will collapse so something to keep in mind okay we are going to need to make four planks. That's the first thing we need to do. And to do that, we're going to need four flint tools. We've got one. It doesn't matter how much they've been used, but we, we need one more. This one will get us as much as, as a brand new one will. But if we have four flint tools, we can take them and take four pieces of, of cedar log, get one out of each. So get one, two, three, four. Okay. Using a flint tool is the most inefficient way to do that, but it's the only thing we can do to start with. That allows us to get a crafting table, which we still need, just like we, we always did before. Um, and now we can take a crafting table and we can make a stone pickaxe, which we need to get right away. Now, something to keep in mind is that the different hardnesses of rock um, have a lot to do with, with the effectiveness of the pickaxe. And so you'll want to use, I, I can't tell you the different, how hard this uh, phyllite is. There's um, going to be a wiki page link in the description and you'll want to go and check stuff out but right now it's the only cobble we or it's the only stone we have so we're just going to use it so what i'm going to do is just hollow this out a little bit more um, you can see that this pickaxe is already outperforming that uh that flint tool by quite a bit i'm just going to get enough that i can make myself a, a little safe little safe spot here i'm going to take that cobble now again cobblestone can be stacked but it cannot um, it cannot be, let's go ahead and do that. I can't put it right there. If I put it right there, it falls just like that. So that's fine for now because we wanted to, we wanted to make sure that we could block that. But now my problem is that I need a piece of dirt to create a fire pit on, um, which I don't think I brought with me. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and make a shovel. We can make a stone shovel. Again, remember we can't make a stone sword, but we can make some basic stone tools. We make a stone shovel. I'm going to go ahead and get one of these pieces of dirt, and that's going to collapse down, which is fine. And I can take this now. And what I want to do is go ahead and dig this out a little bit more. Um, a fire pit, which we're about to make, works best if it has a three by th if it's the center block in a three by three opening with air above it. Um, it doesn't need to be open. I don't think it needs to be open to the actual outside world. Uh, it doesn't need to be open to the air above it, but I think it needs to be that block right there. Um, so that will give us a good fire pit. Now, what we do to make a fire pit, this is something you're not used to as well. We need to make a fire starter, which is just two sticks diagonally. And we take that. We'll also need three sticks. And what we'll do is we'll select them in our hot bar and throw them down with the Q key. We need three of them. And then we take the fire starter and right click. And that was actually pretty good. That happened rather quickly, and it turns into a fire pit. Sometimes you'll go through an entire fire, fire starter before you'll <laughs> successfully get that to occur. So what we're going to do now is get some food, which is one of the first things we need. Um, but to keep, to keep our uh, fire pit going, it's got some initial heat from being started, which I'm just going to go ahead and throw a piece of chicken in there. And you'll see that it's showing cold. We'll talk about the mechanics of heat. But the, the fire temperature has already started to go down. So what we're going to want to do is throw a piece of cedar in there. And it got consumed immediately. You put it in the top slot, and you can see that if I do that, they'll stack up. They all get eaten up from the bottom, but you put them in the top, and they kind of fall down. Now, cedar burns. I'm not sure how. I don't think it's, it's that hot. I think it's kind of a medium temperature. And they've raised the actual temperature gauge on this to be a lot hotter for a max temp. So 
so some of the woods that used to be, okay, I should have shown you that. Some of the woods that used to burn hotter, you might they might seem like they don't burn as hot this time, but that's because the max temperature has been raised, not because they don't burn as hot. You can see that the raw chicken is warming. It's going to go through the stages. It's going to go warming, hot. I think it goes very hot, and then it gets into cooked state. This is an important mechanic for a lot of different things in the game. We no longer make a furnace with just, you know, the the eight pieces of uh, of cobblestone and then just throw in some coal. Um, everything is different now. So when we smelt things, it's going to use that same mechanic uh, of heat, and, and we need to have certain temperatures um, for certain things to smelt and you know, melting points and all that, which we'll talk more about. But um, just keep that in mind, that, that that whole mechanic has changed. So we're going to go ahead and make some... Um, some food because that's really probably the number one thing on our list. But next is going to be torches. And this time, um, torches are, are different as well. Uh, well, not from the last version of Terra Permacraft. You always put them in a some sort of a fire to make torches. You don't use coal and and sticks this time. You use a piece of, of uh, or a stick in a fire. And it'll say catching fire lit and then it becomes a torch. And you can only put one in at a time. You can't put a stack in here. So it takes a little bit of manual labor. We'll get into more efficient ways of doing this later, but all right, that's good. Let's go ahead and, and stick with our six torches, and we'll put one up. And you can see that this is giving off some um, light as well, so we that's why we were we were pretty well lit in here. Let's go ahead and eat, and we'll cook up some more, and I'll talk about a couple of other things. So I'm not going to sleep through the night right now because we really... Um, we really have a lot to do <laughs> and we might, it might as well be night um, to do it. So yeah, let me, uh, let me kind of pause here. So we've got kind of some of the basics we've gone through getting flint, getting sticks, um, make sure you get logs, turn them into some planks and we can then get ourselves uh, a work, a crafting table, which is, is still important. Um, another thing we're going to need pretty quickly is a, an ax, which is again, crafted the same way as it always has been. Now this will allow us to take a piece of um, a piece of wood and we get more than one use out of it. So we still only get one plank per uh, per log, but we can actually get um, multiple uses out of the axe. So if I wanted to break these up into um, planks, I could do that. I'm not going to do it right now because planks will be useful for other things as well. Um, but you can also get a saw, which will allow us to get more than one plank out of a log, which is something that we will want to do eventually as well. So a lot of different levels of, of dealing with things like just these simple things like planks. Um, something else that has changed since the last version is that you can now hold up dirt with um, vertical and hor horizontal support beams. So another thing to show you guys, um, support beams are very important. If you take an ax and then you put two logs, you'll get eight of whatever type of wood support beams. And these are verticals. If you put them horizontally like this, you get horizontal support beams. So this is chestnut wood, which is cool. I didn't notice that at first, but it's a, it's a nice colored wood. I like that. Um, anyway, you use those beams in mines um, because cave-ins are a problem. It's something we have to, to be thinking about, and the sun's coming up. That's cool. Um, cave-ins are very, very common, especially when you mine on the ceiling. If I was to start breaking blocks up here, um, there's a very large chance that, that a lot of these stones are going to turn to cobble and fall. And at worst, it can suffocate and kill you. And at best, you get stuck in here and you have to mine your way out of all that cobble. And when it turns to cobble, it will destroy the ores. And ores are probably our number one um, need right now. I'm going to go ahead and put some more of this wood in here. We'll see if the chestnut burns a little hotter. Um, so anyway, you want to be very aware of, of cave-ins. It's okay if you're digging down. You have a lot better chance of avoiding cave-ins, especially if you're only digging like a one or two wide tunnel. If you start digging up, you have problems. Um, the same is true for like trying to build a cobblestone house or if you wanted to, if we wanted to build kind of an early shed of some sort and we were going to use cobblestone, um, the problem we would run into is that we can't make a roof out of it. But if you put up a support beam, that, that support beam will support the one block on top of it as well as four blocks on either side of it. And I think it can go as, as, as wide as nine blocks. I, I'm not sure. So it's, it's nine by nine, I think, is the, is the area that it will support. Um, so that's, that's important to note. We can make a pretty good size structure, a nine by nine structure with just, um, 
with just one set of, of support beams. Um, and that's true as well for mining. So if you want to have four in front and behind the support beam, four blocks in front and behind will be safe to mine up and down and, and all over the place. And we'll get more into that when we start getting our mine a little bit more official. Okay, so let me take a break here um, and talk about, I actually started another version of this um, of this series and I recorded a few episodes and I decided to actually start over because there was two things. One, um, I was originally going to just do it in kind of a, um, like a spotlight where I just was going to, didn't seem like it burned that much hotter, um, in a spotlight where I was just going to do maybe a couple of, of episodes and kind of show you guys what had changed. And then I was going to lay out some goals and try to, you know, maybe get a few things accomplished. Um, but then when I started playing with that attitude, I wasn't really doing it justice. I wasn't for me or for you guys. I don't think I was really, um, I wasn't putting a lot of effort into the builds or a lot of thought into things. And there was so much that I didn't know. And there's still a ton that I don't know. I am by no means an expert on this. Um, I will be learning with you as we go, but I have learned a little bit ahead now having gone through that. And I just really wanted to approach things a little bit differently. So what I'm going to do um, is turn it into a little mini let's play, just a small series so that I can kind of get this out. Um, something else to keep, uh, or maybe that I want to tell you guys is that I'm actually going to be focusing, um, pretty solidly on a new, uh, 1.3 let's play, um, starting as soon as this series is, is out. And I'm actually working on it right now. Um, and everything else is going to be suspended for a while, probably for a month or two while I get that series really going. I'm going to focus on it. I'm going to try to increase the quality of, um, of the episodes and, and consistency in length and consistency in posting. And I'm going to try to get a single series really nailed down and then I'll start adding things back in. So this is going to be the last kind of little mini series thing that I do before, um, before getting that, that going. So anyway, um, this will probably be somewhere between six and 10 maybe, um, episodes. And what I'm going to try to do is, is build just a, a, a nice house, get a decent set of tools um, get far enough down the road that you guys kind of get an idea of what the series or what the the mod is about and and what you know what it's capable of. Um, it's not really a good time to start a let's play that's going to go for you know a hundred episodes because the game is changing so much so often that it's kind of cool to just take a snapshot, play through it you know a significant amount at a time, but not really dig too deeply into it because you really want to. Um, you want to, if you're going to put a lot of effort into a world, you might have to regen that world um, on the next update. You just don't know. And it's getting more and more stable. He's doing a good job of keeping a lot of things um, as far as world gen stuff in the game that doesn't even necessarily have a use yet so that he can, you know, add things in and not have to do world gens. But right now it's still, it's still the point where that's a possibility. So anyway, I'm going to probably do that. So the other series that I started, I just wasn't, I didn't have the quality that I wanted to see in my builds in some of the way that I approach things. And I want to think about them a little bit more deliberately. So, um, I also, like I mentioned, uh, watching Christ and spotter guide spotters guide, um, learned a lot from his stuff. I would suggest that you go check those out as well. Um, hopefully you can watch both the series and enjoy them, but I will get some tips that I've taken from him. I will pass along, but there's a lot of stuff that he has as well. Um, so it's going to be a short series, but I want to make sure that it's complete. So anyway, let's do this. I'm going to take a quick break and evaluate what I want to do next. Um, a couple of things you guys really need to know about is mining and how to go about that. So I want to gather a few more resources, get ready. Um, I'm just going to gather some wood and, and some sticks and maybe even a little bit more cobble. And then we'll do a quick um, tutorial on kind of how, how you go about mining and how to start doing that. And then I'll look for a place for us to set up, set up shop. And I'm going to check the time as well. So I will be right back. All right, guys, we're at about 25 minutes. I'm going to try to keep these somewhere around um, 30 minutes uh, so we don't have a lot of time. It's raining, which actually has a very interesting effect on some, some gameplay um, as far as the forge goes and things like that, so we'll talk about that a little bit more. But um, I wanted to mention a couple of things. So I'm going to, uh, first off, these uh, white cedar trees, I cut down a bunch of them out here. And one thing you want to do is kind of replant and make sure that you keep, I mean, these resources are valuable. Um, you can see you don't get that much from them and they, they just, they're there. You want to try to keep them, um, keep them going as much as possible. So I try to basically, especially if it's a place where I'm going to live, 
Um, I try to plant a tree for every one I take down, and sometimes I try to plant two so that if I'm in a hurry, I don't, <laughs> um, so I don't have to worry about it. And, and especially if it's a tree um, of a type that, like, if we find hickory trees, um, we'll definitely want to plant a lot of those. Um, the hickory is something that burns really hot, so it's a valuable wood. Um, the, yeah, they they will grow at different rates as far as i can tell i don't know that for sure but i think that some trees grow faster than others that's not a very good place to plant that one um some trees grow faster than others and some some don't produce saplings at all some of them have more rare saplings than others um like a sycamore i believe not, i think it's a sycamore or sequoia actually i think is the sequoia doesn't produce any saplings and they're giant though so if you take those down you're not going to get them back um so just some interesting things to think about um another thing i was going to say is that fire is affected in this game by altitude so the higher you are right now we're at uh 152 which there's there's also a little bit of a weirdness going on i'm not sure exactly what it is but you the the median level is it seems like it's higher i don't know that sea level is actually 60 whatever like it normally is either that or there's kind of mountainous areas like what we're in now that just start higher. So if we get down to sea level, we would be like a hundred blocks lower than we are right now, which doesn't seem right. So anyway, I think this is kind of a median, um, this is kind of a median height. Um, the higher you are in the world, the hotter your fire will burn. And that's important because you can kind of get away with smelting some ores in a fire pit that you might normally need, um, a bloomery for. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. But right now, one of the things that we need to do probably most, um, is get ourselves a prospector's pickaxe. And that is basically a pick and an axe together. Um, <coughs> excuse me. In this shape right here. And that creates us a stone prospector's pickaxe. Now, this is important because this... A couple of things. Finding materials or finding resources in this game can be difficult. Like finding hickory or finding um, specific types of ores or finding clay, which is something we're going to need um, pretty quickly. It, a lot of times you don't find it all of that easily and then when you do you find a fair amount of it so one of the things that i really like that I, I just think is really cool is the idea that when you find let's say we find cassiterite and we we need that for tin it's a very important thing to us when we find cassiterite if we find a very large sample of it we will end up with a mine a cassiterite mine um, and that's not something you get in regular minecraft i mean you might start a mine and you just start you know digging and you're just as likely to find any uh, ore or any block as you are any other um, but you know in different levels affect it but here if you find cassiterite which could take us a long time i'm warning you and i, I won't make you guys sit through it obviously but if we find cassiterite um, we should feel like we've got ourselves a mine that will become the cassiterite mine and we will take time to make sure that we put up support beams so that the cassiterite doesn't get ruined by a cave in and we will we won't be able to take that much out at a time we can only take eight pieces per stack and so we won't be able to take that much and it will become a lot more of a valuable resource and a, and a valuable kind of geographic location the cassiterite mine and we may have to go a long way to find, you know, hematite, which is going to give us iron, and that will become the hematite mine, so we'll have to make a run to the mine. And, and then imagine, you know, getting iron, which is not easy to do. All of a sudden, now you've got... I'm going to go ahead and make a pickaxe while I'm rambling. Um, or a couple of them. Um, now, all of a sudden, you've got, you know, mine, mine, mine carts and rails that are really expensive to make but become really valuable because you actually have to transport um, goods because of the, the inventory issues. So, um, yeah, it's just it's a lot different approach to things, and I really like that. Okay, so quickly, the prospector's pickaxe, what we do is we right-click on a block, and it tells us in a, what is it, 27, so 12 blocks in front of us, 12 blocks behind us, to the left and to the right of us, it's going to tell us whether or not it finds anything of interest. It's going to randomly select the first ore it finds and tell us if it has how much of a sample it found, a small, medium, large, or very large, or traces, I think, is the smallest. Um, and then also six blocks above us and six blocks below us. So it's like a 27 by 27 by 12 or 13, um, including the block you're standing on. So we click here, and we didn't find anything of interest. So we need to mine down a little bit. And in the interest of time, I'm going to do that. I'm just going to mine down in this pattern right here, where I basically mine directly in front of me, and then one block down, and that gives me a little bit of headroom. So let me do that, and then I will come back and cut in for the interest of time, and we'll wrap it up. 
All right, guys, I'm back. Um, I did a little bit of mining. You can see that I just kind of made this staircase like I was talking about. Um, this is something else I wanted to show you. So what I found here is a piece of flawless amethyst. I also have a chipped ruby. Um, what's important about that or what's significant is that those are random drops that happen from blocks. You just get them randomly. And I'm sure that um, the type of stone that you're digging in has some effect on it. Well, I say I'm sure. I think it does. I don't really know. Um, flawless amethyst, I think, is the highest. There might be like an exquisite amethyst um, that's one level higher. And this is obviously the lowest level you could get of something being a chipped whatever. Um, so that's one thing just to kind of keep in mind. Um, you will get those. They don't have any use right now in the game, but <clears throat> something that someday will be probably used for who knows what. Um, okay, another thing I wanted to tell you is that you can repair tools. Um, stone pickaxes can be repaired. Um, actually, all of the, the tools can be repaired. But the difference is that stone, you have to they have to be like stone, and you can't really tell what kind of stone this pickaxe was made out of. We just happen to know it was phyllite um, because that's the only stone that we've gotten so far. But if we made one out of granite and one out of phyllite, we wouldn't be able to use those to cross um, repair them. So anyway, I have not found anything of use yet. And you can see that when you right click with this prospector's pickaxe, it uses up, you can see down there, it's using up my, uh, I'm pointing at the screen. It's using up my uses on the prospector's pickaxe. So I haven't found anything yet, right? Within, that means, I think it's like 8,000 blocks is what, um, is what the, they were saying that it scans. If you do the 20, the 23 by 23 by 16 or by 17 or whatever it is, um, or by 13, sorry, it, it's like 8,000 blocks. That means within 8,000, if I mined 8,000 blocks around me, I don't know if that sounds right, but it's a lot of blocks, whatever it is, um, I wouldn't find anything of use, right? So you want to just keep going until you do. I think this is a, a good place for us to stop. You you get the idea of what it takes to mine and how to make the tools. Um, next time what we'll do is is kind of look for a couple of things. Um, I may do a little bit more mining here. The wiki is actually down right now, so I'm not able to figure out what I would even find if I was going to find something in this stone, but you could go to the wiki and find out what is, uh, what's even possible to be found here. What we're definitely going to want to look for is granite. And just a real quick parting note about the rock layers. Um, when the world generation occurs, the rock layers are are determined for each type of biome. And they're all, that type of biome is gonna have the same rock layers. It doesn't mean it's gonna have the same depths and everything, but generally they're gonna be the same. So if I find phyllite here in a hill six biome, you can see that the, the biome is hill six, then in another hill six on the other side of the world, I'm gonna find the same rock layers, I'll find phyllite. Um, so there are 130 biomes. There's like hills one through whatever it is, I don't know, 10 or something like that, and then deserts one through 10. And each one of the hills can have a different set of rock layers. So what I'm gonna wanna do is find a place where um, where I can find granite. I don't know if granite is always the top rock layer. I'm gonna have to look into that a little bit, but we're gonna definitely want to find granite. And to do that, we're gonna have to go to a different biome. Um, that's, or I'm gonna dig down through here till I get to the next rock layer, and I guess there's a possibility it could be granite, although I usually I have found it on top layers. Um, anyway, that's something that's gonna be important to us because it's key to uh, to what we're doing. And so what we may want to do is find a really cool place to live that's kind of on the edge of multiple biomes that would have um, different rock layers and rock formations so that we could find different types of ores because we're going to need a lot of different ores to kind of progress through the metal system. So anyway, I have, uh, I have taken enough time. We've gone a little bit over 30 minutes, but I appreciate your patience. Um, if you enjoyed it, thumbs up, please. Um, leave comments. I will respond to every single one of them. Let me know what you think about this series and uh, my 1.3 series moving forward and kind of taking a break and pausing on the rest of the stuff. I'd like to hear what you have to say about all that. And uh, check me out on Twitter. Follow me there. It's a great way to communicate with me and to find out what's going on. That's uh, Twitter, uh, Minecraft OTB on Twitter, and then Facebook.com slash Minecraft OTB if that's your thing. Um, I appreciate you guys watching. Tell your friends, and I'll talk to you next time.